kid, I was I had a perfect childhood. But once I started to transition to being a teenager, that's when I felt I didn't belong. And and that was because of the inferiority complex I had. And I had um, I had a big nose. And it sort of like caused me to shrink in the social structure because I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to do anything. Um, I didn't want to go to parties. Um, I didn't go on my first date till I was 20. And it was just a, a very uncomfortable, I, I, I was putting off growing up. So I felt I didn't, I, I had a feeling of not belonging for seven, seven years. My brother, this is when Elvis became big, was very handsome, very good looking, looked like Elvis. And they used to make all kinds of uh, wonderful comments about him. And uh, two things stuck in my mind. One, I remember he was in bed sleeping. And I think my father took company into his bedroom so they could see him while he was sleeping. This is when Elvis was big. And I go, gee, he didn't take him into my bedroom. And besides, who the hell did I look like? Leave it to Beaver? So um, then, uh, so I, it was always that, um, gee, I wish I looked like my brother syndrome. Then uh, another time we were at a family event and uh, one of my uncles um, said to my father, geez, how could you have two kids, one so handsome and one so ugly? And I needed that really. That really helped me a lot, you know, and, and I was like about, I don't know, 12. You know. It was sort of like, it, it ruined my day, let me put it that way. But it was something that didn't help me get out of this doldrum that I was in. And um, so when you hear things like that, and what a dichotomy, because I see everyone like making all of this fuss over my brother, with me, it was just the opposite, being made fun of. So you go, you go in two different directions. So a feeling of not belonging was quite extensive for me. It lasted a long time. If I had a moment, a eureka moment, is when I decided back in 1969 to get a nose job. And um, I'll never forget, I went to a doctor, Dr. Kajanian. I was like 19 years old, and he refused to do it. He says, your nose fits your face. I said, Doc, I don't like my nose on my face, so uh, will you do it? He goes, no, because I feel I'll mess you up. I go, okay, fine. So my, we went to my family doctor, Dr. Um, Sabia, who I knew, her daughter had a nose job, and so I knew, she knew someone, and doctors seemed to have like a a late in different realms of what they do. And uh, sure enough, me and my mother went to see her and she says, I'll link you up, his name is Dr. Melvin White. This is how profound this was to me. I remember their names, especially the one that refused me. He was in Kenmore Square. So when you remember tiny moments like that, that took about maybe two minutes, and they're so vivid, you can, you know that they were a big influence on your life. Then I was in the hospital for a week, one week. Now you have to remember, they put this big rubber thing from one part of your nose to the other, so you can't breathe through your nose. You're breathing through your mouth. And it had to be like that for a month. So I was in the hospital for a week, and then for a month I was at home. I never looked in the mirror, never did, because my eyes looked like mushrooms. I would have, I would have looked like the creature from the Black Lagoon, because you're all black and blue. You know, it, it looks like you got into a fight, and you're pretty messed up, and your face is all swollen. So I did not want to look in the mirror. Then we had to go a month later, let's leave forward a month, and I had to go there and have that piece of rubber pulled out, and all I heard was, and this rush of air just, oh, such a wonderful feeling to be able to breathe, because don't forget when you're, you know, uh, just breathing through your mouth, because it's clogged, you're, you're stuffed. You have to be very, very careful. 
So when you eat, um, when you're talking, it's a, it, it, it was a month, it was five weeks of, of, of hell. But I looked at it in the long term that it was going to be beneficial, ben, beneficial for me in the long run, which it definitely was. So when I um, had a feeling of belonging is when I finally looked in the mirror and I saw what I saw because it, it, it changed my whole look. Everybody goes, oh my God, they, they were overwhelmed. And uh, it just, it took my life in a 180 degree turn. I went from being, don't look at me, I don't want to go there, I don't want to do this, I don't want to be, I, I, I don't want a girl to look at me, to, to almost like um, being a Casanova. I only wish I'd done the nose job sooner. <laughs> Because uh, uh, it, it's a shame um, that you go through your whole teenage years um, living in the darkness. It's really, really sad and un unnecessary. Uh, because it, it, it's funny, when I think back, some guys that when not even as good looking as I was then were going out with girls all the time because they didn't let it bother them. For some reason, it's all a mindset. Because why is the guys who had bigger noses than I did, bigger ears, bigger everything, were just going out and having a great time, yet I thrust it upon myself um, to not have a good time because of that one thing. And um, that's why I'm very, 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 uh, I, I get very angry when I see someone making fun of someone else. Because I've been there. And when you're the butt of jokes, I don't care if you're just fooling around, it hurts. It really, really, really does. And I don't like when I see someone make fun of anyone else. And that's why I never do that. I, 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 it would be impossible um, to make fun of someone's looks. I, I, I just, um, it, 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 you have to live it to know how um, it can hurt. Words can hurt more than a punch because it hits you in the heart. And when it hits you in the heart, it can be uh, quite devastating. If I could suggest anything to anybody, and you feel, and you feel um, down on yourself, and there's a lot of that going around these days, um, if in fact you know something is out there that can help you, do not hesitate. Do it as soon as you can. Whatever that may be, it might be something physical, it might be something like uh, getting an education, but if there's one thing that is an absolute tragedy, is wasted time, because you can never get it back. And my suggestion would be, if there's anything that someone out there feels that um, they're down on themselves, they have to take a look at themselves and say, what can I do to make this better? Do something to improve your current situation and if it's something that you feel down on yourself with be because you're not really educated well go to goddamn school and finish your education and then go to college in other words work hard life is not going to come to you with the panacea of choices pick whatever you want and you'll be all set you have to go and get it whether it be a physical issue or a mental issue it's out there all you have to do is reach out there and get it. And in my case, my not being accepted was my fault because of my inferiority complex. There were a lot of people that wanted to sort of go out with me and have a good time, whatever, and I wouldn't do it. That's all on me.